Hello. And welcome to my humble little channel. Today, I'll be ranting a bit about how the progress made on a game development project is directly tied to the developer's approach to their work. I'll also be sharing some insights, perspectives and experiences that I've gained from my solo game development journey. Now, I do not profess to be an expert in game development or anything of the sort. I'm just someone that spent the last two plus years solo developing a game which is now nearing completion. In case you're curious, my game is titled Citadel Stormer 2 and its gameplay footage serves as the background content for this presentation. Check the description for details. Given my experience I feel I am somewhat qualified to offer a piece of advice or two on the topic at hand. So, if you're a solo game developer, or even someone just starting out in game development, you might find this video interesting. So please stick around and watch till the end. Let me start with a personal anecdote. When I first started my game development journey, I treated my game as a fancy art project and a means of creative expression. Although I had a working prototype, much of my game development work involved creating art pieces and coming up with ideas and concepts. I would fill notebooks with concept sketches, game ideas, lore, dialogues, and so on. Quite often, I would obsessively rework certain things over and over until I was thoroughly satisfied with the result. I did it because I was very emotionally invested in my game and wanted to do my very best. The very thought of producing something of low quality was simply unacceptable to me. I went about my work in this manner believing I was being very productive. But the reality was that all the constant brainstorming, reworking and artistic obsession only hindered the progress of the game I was trying to create. Ironically, even though I was constantly working, I had very little to show for it. When I finally realized all this, I concluded that my work style was highly inefficient and required a complete overhaul. With this newfound clarity, I set a straightforward goal for myself to complete the game, release it and get it out of my system. I then took what I like to call a blue-collar approach towards my game. The idea was to detach myself emotionally from my project and adopt the disciplined and dedicated work ethic often associated with blue-collar workers. In other words, I began to see my beloved project as just a job that had to be completed, and myself as a worker with the responsibility of accomplishing the task at hand without overthinking. It also followed that I had to be my own boss and take charge of things. It was only then that I truly became organized. I started thinking in terms of time and tasks. I created detailed checklists with specific timelines for each thing that needed to be done. In short, I made plans and stuck to them. And doing so led to measurable progress, bringing me closer to achieving my goals. Anyway, the main takeaway here is that a blue-collar approach to solo game development instills a sense of urgency and seriousness, which pushes you to complete your project no matter what. It also directs all your energy towards achieving your objective. In contrast, the art project approach tends to lack the sense of urgency and seriousness that is essential for progress. It primarily relies on factors like inspiration and aesthetic preferences. While it can be good for conceptual organization and the creation of refined art pieces, it is often open-ended and whimsical with no accountability. Consequently, you may find yourself wandering about in the abstract realms of ideas and concepts, without considering the specific time frame or deadline for finishing your project. To illustrate this point, taking the art project approach towards game development would be akin to producing a movie with a constantly changing script, and without taking into consideration the timing of the completion of filming or the eventual release date. In the case of the game and the film, even if you create something brilliant and fantastic, it remains unplayed or unseen. And if that's the case, you would have wasted all your time and effort. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that things like art, conceptualization and ideation are unimportant or that they can be neglected. All that I'm trying to convey is that the art project approach may not be practical for a solo developer who is not only overburdened but also works with limited resources. In an ideal situation, separate individuals would handle the tasks of art, coding, sound and everything else that's needed for a game. Unfortunately, solo developers have no choice but to take on all aspects of game development themselves. In this regard, a blue-collar approach is, in my opinion, the most efficient method for a solo developer to adopt. By working with a sense of dedication and adhering to deadlines as if under the supervision of a boss, a solo game developer is forced to view the project holistically and make sure to keep track of multiple tasks and ensure that they are all addressed. You might say that this mindset is dull and drains the fun out of game development. But I'd argue that all it does is introduce a bit of discipline into the process. Because at the end of the day, it is discipline, and not fun that leads a project to its successful completion. Regardless of whether it's a AAA title or a small indie game, every game is fundamentally a job that requires careful planning and dedicated work. Game development shares similarities with other creative pursuits such as filmmaking, book writing, or songwriting, where the goal is to create a final product, a film, a book or an album, in which the original ideas and concepts are conveyed. 
Failing to produce the final product translates to wasted time, effort and resources. The very same holds true for game development. Considering all this, it can be easily argued that the activity of game development involves an element of seriousness. It's not a matter of blowing around clouds of ideas and concepts. Thus, game development requires a structured and disciplined approach. There needs to be concrete planning, organization, and focused effort to transform ideas into a tangible and well-executed game. And I submit that the blue-collar approach facilitates all of that. That's it for now. If you found this video informative and enjoyable, please leave a comment. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with others. Additionally, if you'd like to stay tuned for more insightful content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your support.